All right, welcome everyone to another Tuesday news day that's slightly later than usual. And with me, as usual, I have Sinzar. Hey, Sinzar. Hello, Esther fans. Uh, Esther fans. The worst fan base of FFB. All right, I don't want to shit on the unit, but I want to shit on the fan base. I know we don't see a tie on this, right? Uh, I couldn't understand you. Don't hate me. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I, I'm not going to say anything, okay? I'm going to get hate for it so you know astro fans i love you you are beautiful keep playing the game and pulling and loving astro okay that's great this is the astro banner <laughs> i guess that's that's that, that's a spoiler and uh esther has finally gotten her neo vision and not just a neo vision she's a cg neo vision unit right she is the cg is actually pretty nice i liked it i saw it yeah um i like i'm not a huge fan of the aesthetic of esther because i feel like she kind of breaks I don't know what it is, but it's just a bit weird compared to, you know, units like Elena, Louise, uh, Madam, and so on. But, but, but it's like, it, it, it's well made. I can give the fans that it's well made. So hmm. what do we have here? This is a true Brave Shift unit, right? Uh, yes, based on the limited info we have from both the preview video from Shelly and the news, uh, her base form is an extreme Nova limit burst damage dealer. And her shift form is a tank, is what we are basically told. Right. And I love this. I just want to say, I've said this so many times before, but this is my favorite type of unit design when we're talking NVs, where the unit has roles, especially if the bo both roles are useful. And, and we saw this archetype work really well for Chow, right? So this is kind of, I guess, the physical version of Chow, right? Uh, uh, that's kind of a stretch to say it works well for Chow. Chow did okay damage in the clash fight that was literally handcrafted for him. But if we're talking just day-to-day -day bosses, no, Chow's damage really is not good. He's a great tank. Chow, top-tier tank. But as far as damage dealing, Chow really isn't that good. Right, right. Okay, okay. So maybe it's kind of the same, but in the other direction, I guess, because everyone is expecting Esther to be much more of a damage dealer than a tank, right? Although we don't know. Yeah, that's what I would assume. I would assume that her damage, dealer, her damage dealing should be top tier, and the tanking is probably going to be like serviceable, but not like primary tank status like Mae or something. That's what I would guess. Yeah, if I had to guess, I would guess that like her tanking ability is going to be very important for this cow. That's usually how it is. That there is something in her tanking kit that's going to make the cow battle easier. Uh, but but it's too early to speculate, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we should have mentioned this before, uh, well, we technically did, but then the recording fucked off, but, uh, um, so she's a premium unit. Yes, and she seems to be the same as all the other premiums, which, based on past history, um, what we do know, she's going to be 60k, and then it's almost certainly that she's going to have no 5k bundle, she's going to have no shards in the Lapis Shop, she will have 50 shards in VIP after the second week, they're going to cost triple the price, um, there's probably going to be the um, 25 shards for 50 US dollars viable twice. So for $100, you can get 50 shards, and that's it. Oh, there's also the fortune summon. We have, there's also the fortune summon for 25 shards. And we should be getting the 30 from login, right? Yes, yes, we get 30 for login as well. Yeah, that's that, yeah. that's so far has been for all units, even the Xeno Gears units. That was a whole other topic. <laughs> Exactly. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, pretty cool sprite, I want to say. Um, even though I don't like Esther's aesthetic, I do think they, like, I've heard some people complain that the sprite is just her original sprite and then that is just the color inversion in her shift. I don't quite agree. I do feel there are significant differences in both. Um, they do did spend time on these sprites, is, is what I'm feeling. I just don't like the aesthetic of it. But I do feel like it's a well made sprite. Uh, even if that was true, like what what would be the problem with that? Just just like seriously, like it's the same unit. Like we're not we're not looking for two different units here. So the sprite. Ooh, is so I don't care. I just know people have been a bit upset that they're saying, "Oh, it's just a recolor." I mean, people did this for for a couple of units now that we've gotten released, and it's kind of like it, it, it's the same sprite basically. Um, and and I mean, yeah, I, I think your question is very valid. What did you expect? You know, like riding a mech, you know. Yeah, I mean, she can, like, throw on a Ninja Turtle outfit or something because she's a Neo Visions now. Like, she is a bunny swordsman. That's what she's always been. That's what she still is. She's got more sparkles now because she's Neo Visions, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's Esther. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I think she has her signature bunny ear hoodie that I absolutely hate, but that's that's just me. Um, and like some things are even different, like the ears are shaped different than this. This so so yeah. I mean, I think anyway. I just I just I just want to say I think it's a well made sprite. I think this is a decent looking sprite, and uh, I just think she looks more like a tank in the base form sprite than it sh she does in the shift sprite because the shift sprite is telling me she's about to fuck some shit up, right? Whereas the base form sprite is more like I am, you know, she well. she's ready to take damage. For me, this is a problem with just tanks in general. I don't like when tanks don't look like a tank. And no, I don't think S looks like a tank at all. But then again, so do, neither do a lot of other units that are supposed to be tanks. So that's yeah, yeah. Not, ex not exclusive to Esther. I mean, technically, we have like three units that look like a tank. We, we have like the Charlottes. They look like tanks, right? The two of yeah. them. Yeah, Gabran. Because they have the shield and the thing, right? We have, we have uh, well, Behemi counts. Um, mm hmm Behemi. And, but some, but for example, but for example, something like Gladiolus, like he's sitting there yeah. with like a, a, an open T-shirt and no armor whatsoever. Like you're, who, who are you tanking dressed like this? Yeah, he's tanking. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. And same with Maeve. She doesn't really. I, I mean, I think you and me talked about this on the Newsday even that that Maeve also doesn't have the pure tank aesthetic, right? Like you don't really. Mm -hmm. It looks like a berserker ready to break skulls and not really someone ready to take a ton of damage. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's good. So with Esther, um, her STMR seems really, really strong. Like incredibly strong. I don't know. I mean, I, we don't even know what passes are gonna look like. But it's a 220 attack, two-handed greatsword with 500 passive attack and 75% LB damage. Like, what the fuck? Well, the 500 attack is Esther only, but the rest of it, uh, the 75 LB is for everyone. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I, nice. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's not nice. <laughs> it's, it's so strong. Like, there's no weapon coming close to this. Like, maybe... like. This is kind of a better version uh, of Reina STMR um, for Esther. I mean, we, right? just got, we just got a free weapon that was better than this, so... What? What do you mean? The Kane, the, the Kane Chronicle is a 234 attack power, two-hander with 150 jump damage. It gives Kane 500 attack and 30, 30 modifier to all his LBs. So, like, this is yeah, but not... This one has, I mean, if you look beyond the Esther-only stuff, right, this is 220 attack with 75% LB damage. That's pretty big. I mean, it's it's a good weapon, don't get me wrong. It's just, like, I don't really see this as, like, anything special over what we already have. Like, we've already got really good weapons. For example, the Cl Cleo Star STMR is almost the same. I get it's a little bit less LB damage, but it's, you know, a, a year-old STMR, so... You 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 know what? You have a good point. Actually, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just like reading the stats and feeling like, wow, this is so big. But uh, yeah, right. Like Cleo Star STMR is there, um, and Rain. Well, Rain STMR is just like a lot less attack. Although it does have more LB damage, which is nice for the units that need it. Yeah, like 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 you know, this is definitely a good STMR. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's very strong, very good. If I if I pull multiple extras, I'm gonna mogul at least one extra copy. So it's it's a good item. It is certainly a good item. Oh, so so this is a great segue into. So you're absolutely pulling for this, right? This is a cow unit. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to pull for her. Now, as far as am I going all the way to EX three? Well, that's going to be questionable. But I, I do want at the very minimum to get her. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Um. So otherwise, like, hard to say anything about her. We should maybe mention the whole recharge Magnus uh, mechanic, right? So she's bringing this new mechanic where she has a Magnus that she can use once per battle, but she can charge it back up, kind of. So it's not once per battle. It's, it's like once per charge is, I think, the better term, right? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool mechanic. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's different. I really like when they do different things. Uh, it does. I mean, if I'm going to be just like a party pooper, it does feel like almost like a, a sideways way for them to stop the entrust spam strategies because based on what we can kind of infer from the previews it seems like her her rotation is going to be identical to original esther which is lb triple chain to refill the lb lb again and repeat that so you're not going to be able to use entrust to 
double LB in a row. It seems like her modifier boost and her Magnus are being assumed for her rotation. I'm making a lot of assumptions here for a unit we don't yeah, have to think. I mean, I'm, not sure I, I'm not sure you're right. I actually think that LB spam will still be relevant because if I understand this mechanic correctly, one LB use is one charge of the Magnus, right? No, no, no. That's, 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 the, that's the thing that everyone's getting confused on. They didn't read the fine print in the video. The video had a little edit on the bottom right corner during that section in really tiny writing that said, at level 40 LB, one LB use completely refills all Magnuses to maximum. So it's based on your LB level. Oh. So, as, so as, as long as you give her some, some of your 5 billion limit burst pots, you're going to refill all the Magnuses to the maximum every, every LB. But but then like okay, so what what's like her actual her actual rotation will then be you know LB Magnus LB Magnus I guess or yes, well we exactly. don't know how long the Magnus lasts though um, like we don't know the durations it could be a Magnus that actually lasts longer than one turn. It's possible, and if that's the case, then you can entrust spam her. So we'll have to that, that right, that's right. kind of that's kind of thing we're gonna have to just see on the data model. Yeah, yeah. But it, uh, but I agree with you on the fact that it's an interesting mechanic. It's like it's making it a bit different. I am a huge fan, huge huge fan of the big burst unit design. Like you would not believe how much I love that. It's so visually appealing to just see a boss's health chunk the fuck down when specific conditions are met. I love this for all the units that have this, like, like cooldown. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? A blast from the past, since we're talking about Esther, Zeno. Zeno was like that. He had, like, this big setup to be able to triple cast his obliterating bullshit, 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 something roar, and, like, did a ton of damage on a single turn. And it seems like this is kind of a bit the same, although if you're doing it every other LB, then maybe it isn't. I don't know. So you're saying your favorite unit is Dragon Lord Neovisions, where you um, charge him for ten rounds and then finally attack? Well, I don't. I mean, I think ten rounds is maybe a bit much. That, that's that's. I mean, yes, technically, I like that mechanic where you're like really charging up to unleash hell. Um, it, it's it's part of why I like Graf as well because he's kind of he has this big burst and and like that really hits hard and needs to fill these specific conditions in order to be used kind of um but okay this sounds like a very interesting uh, unit i know it's a huge fan favorite uh, you know don't hate me for saying i don't like her aesthetics you know what i am entitled to my opinion um uh, i'll probably do some pulling on esther's banner um like whatever lapis i have i guess <laughs> from the story event but that's that's about it um and we do have the story event, so that's, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I'm hoping that it's going to be the standard, what we get, like 2,500 lapis, some some sort, right? Uh, probably, something like that, I would assume. One thing I think is a bit weird is that it's actually an Easter-themed event, which is confusing to me, because, like, it, it's like you're collecting eggs and egg dies. That's, you know, like, somebody said in the Discord, like, I think this event was planned for last Easter. Maybe they were right. Uh, either planned for last Easter or it was planned for this Easter and it got fast-tracked because of scheduling conflict or something. I'm not sure. Or because, you know, Easter falls into the next quarter and they really want to show strong numbers for this quarter. Uh, it's possible. It's possible, yeah. Okay, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm not complaining. I just think it's a bit weird, you know, like it, it's an Easter-themed event and we're getting this unit. Uh, a bit ahead of time, but that's fine. Maybe maybe, maybe Roberta is going to be, as I've been saying, I'm so afraid of Roberta is going to be riding the Easter Bunny when she comes up. Maybe that's actually going to happen. Uh, That'd be funny. That but, would something, be but something to make sure players don't miss from the story event is the lightning fast legend materia. It's going to give your support unit or any unit um, extreme Nova chaining frames, which is going to be a really big deal because Esther chains extreme Nova which is a really obscure family. I know a few units have it, but not many. Yeah, it's super difficult to find another, like if you want to chain Esther, like support chain for her, because because Esther has always been a chaining LB finisher, right? And uh, that's probably what she is now too, right? I mean, we know she's Extreme Nova, right? Yeah, she's Extreme Nova on her LB. So an Extreme Nova, for those that know, is very, very similar to AR, uh, meaning it's basically impossible to fit into anything else than another AR chain, right? Um, I think of like God's precision, you can you can weave it into Bolt and Strike, but but playing with it on the the chain the chain app thing, 
Um, like it's it was it's gonna be hard. It can be yeah. really hard. It's, it's technically possible, but you don't want to have to fight that. To, to, to yeah, exactly, exactly. You you either slam it into a into two units chaining AR because then it's gonna work, or you have a partner. And this is really good. This is really good that we're getting this. Um, it's it's an extreme Nova chain. I think you know what I was just sad because I wish Esther's LB was AR. And this ability was AR because I could really use <laughs> equipable AR. I really could. Oh yeah, that, that'd be amazing for um like dark visions and all, just a chain count score, or just remove the chain count score from the game. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yes, yes, please. Like nobody likes it. I mean, come on, like nobody, literally nobody. I, if I see the person that said I like the chain cap score, I will punch them in the face. All right, like nobody likes it. Okay, but but that's that's a good point. Do not miss this because you're gonna be putting this on your support units in order to chain with Esther if you don't have like two Esters or if it's, you know, bring five units of your own type of challenge, then you definitely want to be able to chain with her without bringing two external AR chainers. Mm -hmm. And of course there is a, a Clash of Wills accompanying Esther. And if, if you know, the past Clash of Wills are, are any indication, this is going to be quite tailored to Esther, right? I would almost certainly assume this, considering the boss is the Egg Exterminator himself. Exactly. It's the Egg Exterminator, although he put on some, some jewelry, so he looks a bit more fancy than usual. All right? Like, he didn't always have this gold and stuff in his face. Nope, he put on his monocle and top hat. <laughs> his monocle and top hat. Oh my god, such a dapper little egg. Okay, so um, I, I've been talking a lot about this. I, I, I like, And in fact, you and me actually agreed in the Discord, since I'm going to... I, I, screenshot of that and I, I printed it up on my wall where I was saying, you know, we were both kind of agreeing on that. The negative thing about blatantly tailoring cow events to new units in a very complex way is that it reduces the options you have for actually clearing that cow. Like it very much limits the amount of units you can use, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, you see, it's, it's kind of like a double-edged sword here on the one hand. I really enjoy that the Clash of Wills are complex. They're super challenging. They need like really razor tuned teams to get it done. I love that. What I don't love is like to build that kind of razor tuned team. You need basically always the brand new unit, which I understand from a business perspective, but it really, it really handicaps your team building options. And yeah. you also need like that one specific unit that also does this and that one specific unit that does this. It's just like, like Kresnik has been another one that like uniquely oh, yeah. does, and there's sure. no alternatives. Like if you need an imbue, like it's Kresnik. I realize Seacar can do it, but Seacar is a completely worthless party slot beyond that, while Kresnik is not. So really, it's just Kresnik for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, no, absolutely. I think that like that's 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 what irks me a bit. It's that it's. Like, I mean, as I, like, I agree with you, I understand from the business perspective why it's being done. It's being done so that the new unit feels powerful and useful and that you get rewarded for pulling it and that you have also, of course, get kind of enticed to pull it, right? But what I don't like is being forced, like, especially, and this is especially true if you don't have the unit for that cow, then you have even more of these must-have units getting pulled into your team, right? Like, if you have the unit from cow, maybe it's just Kresnik. But if you don't have the cow unit, then you're going to have to have, like, you're going to use Kresnik and Tiana and one more unit, and they, you just cannot remove them from your team because they are the ones that unlock whatever mechanic exists, right? Yeah, and I just want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm being clear here. I don't think that the problem is that the boss needs these really specific mechanics. I like that the bosses are complex. The problem yeah. is these mechanics we need are so limited on our units. What they should do is add more Clash of Wills toolkits to other units and not make it only global exclusives. And this might be going beyond their capabilities, but like adding, you know, some Clash of Wills skills to all the upcoming future JP units. Like we're getting Edge kind of soon, the, you know, the, the lightning breaker from JP. Right. Well, add some like morale stuff to him and some morale skills that only work in Clash and make him not just a worthless pull for anyone doing Clash of Wills. Stuff like that. That way, instead of just being Kresnik, let's say maybe you can bring Kresnik, or you can bring Edge, who has a Magnus. Make it only work at a certain morale threshold so you can't cheese Dark Visions with it. So in right. Clash of Wills, Edge can imbue the boss 
for three turns with Lightning for Magnus. So now Kresnik is no longer the one and only option for this fight. You can bring Kresnik or your brand new Edge. Do the same thing for another future unit, like um, Leftia is coming. You know, give her the fire imbue, etc. That way you've got more, more options of what we, what we need. So don't nerf the boss. The boss design, top tier. Thumbs up to all the Clash of Wills designers. The problem is the limited selection of answers in our units. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I, I, I want to I wanna stand on the same side here and say that the Clash design is amazing. The bosses are fun. What's not fun is having such a hard time meeting the mechanics without one specific unit and again i don't want to be like i don't want to people think that i am complaining about the fact that i don't have the, the the current banner unit or that i might not have kresnik or whatever um but rather the fact that i would like to be able to play the game in a way where i can choose to have a slightly lower score still still a high score but slightly lower score and use maybe some units that i like a bit more than others uh, th that's that's just the type of gamer I am, and when but I agree with you that it's it's a unit design problem, right? Because the problem is actually that these other units that I like, like let's say I would want to bring um, Duran. Okay, let's I've been using Duran as an example many times now. Uh, Duran, right? Like I would love to bring him, but he he's gonna be a dead slot, right? Like he he does, he's probably not gonna be solving the the cow puzzle for me. But that's because his kit wasn't really built with being interesting and diverse. And I feel that's really only true for GLEX units. I, you know, like Ling, Bulwark, Kresnik, uh, Behemi, Maeve, they have really interesting kits that are diverse and they are kind of Swiss army knives that can be put in many teams and solve this puzzle for you. Yeah, that, that's pretty much exactly it. Like Duran, you know, is an example. Um, you know, just going back to the source game, Duran, you know, Duran could be six different classes and some of his potential builds were support builds. So again, they could have just slapped on a few support skills that are only available in Clash of Wills to keep the outside of Clash game balance intact. Um, and yeah, that way Duran could be, you know, a useful Clash of Wills unit. That would have been awesome. And, you know, for all units, I think, I think every single new unit added to the game on Global should get something for Clash of Wills, so that they aren't just completely and utterly worthless in Clash of Wills. Yeah, absolutely agreed. Absolutely. I mean, you know, or, or I agree, but I don't think that's realistic. What I think is a good message is to start adding more versatility when designing units in general. And maybe, maybe, maybe if we're doing NVAs, if we're going to start doing them again or EX Awakenings, sneak something in there because I see, you know, like we're getting these messages that they're focusing on cow because players like cow. Yeah. Well, you know, I see this as part of focusing on cow because this is how you make cow even more fun, how you entice even more players into pulling. So, you know, like keep it in mind, I guess. And I guess this yeah. is a good segue into some of the messages that we've gotten in the latest news. Do you want to talk about them? Uh, you mean the producer letter? Yeah, there was a producer letter mentioning two things specifically, right? Um, first one is just the Sino Gears collab and the lack of shards. Um, the message was really okay. You know, um, we're sorry you didn't like it, uh, but we just wanted to balance because we feel these units are so incredibly powerful. And you know what? I'm gonna be calling bullshit on this one because first of all, we know the graph. He's powerful, but like soon Kane is gonna do more damage than him. So I, I don't understand the reasoning here. To be honest, like I don't like I don't see. Yeah, why do they assume you're idiots? You know, like, we all know why there's less shards for Xenogears units. It's because they wanted to make more money. There's no shame in that. You don't have to lie about it. Yeah, the, um, I actually used you as an example in my own news video talking about this. So, on the one hand, um, if they're using the reason because the units were powerful, and Graf, I mean, I, I, I can get on board saying graph is better than most premium units because he actually is he does he out he out damages literally all the premium units we currently own on global he out damages no, them all no, every right. single one which is fine but the problem I mean, is that's only true for now right that's only true until we get the variance upgrade yeah yeah but i mean it's true for a month and a month is you know is two ranked events like it, it matters sure but sure. okay but um the problem here is id so if this is this was the real reason why is id 
tripled in cost or whatever you want to call it, no shards. He's he's premium priced as well because Id, by no stretch of the imagination, deserves the premium treatment. He is absolutely worse than quite a few units we already own. Um, like so, if the problem was units were too powerful, Graph, okay. Then why did you boost the price of Id and like piss off players like Barrows, as I mentioned in my video, that are just diehard Xeno fans? They just want their favorite unit. They want to pull for Id. And he costs exceptionally high, and he does not at all deserve the, the cost increase. Same thing for the next week, the Kane banner. Same exact scenario. Kane, yeah, he really is on premium level. He's a powerful unit. Rydia, absolutely not. So players that pulled for Rydia got just screwed by this dramatic price increase because the unit's more expensive, the shards are gone, et cetera, and maybe they just wanted Rydia. And Rydia yeah. is, is not good. Like, I mean, I, I, I apologize for making fun of your, your, your favorite unit, but Rydia is not a strong unit in today's game. Oh. She's, she's a fan unit. End of story. Yeah, and, and that's, that's kind of like, you know, I, I, I honestly get angry when companies do this, when, when they're just like blatantly just lying. Why? Why? Like, what is the, how is this building relationship with your player base? Why do you feel like you need to say oh we did this to balance fuck you you did not do this to balance do not lie to our face like come on we're not idiots it's like you know it's okay we added less shards because we needed to make more money for this quarter maybe it's a shitty message i get it but don't lie then rather say fucking nothing instead okay like honestly this makes me more angry <laughs> than than them not communicating because when they're not communicating I'm just assuming they're testing different things in order to repair a bad fiscal year by getting more revenue. And I understand that. I understand that businesses need to do that. But I get fucking angry when people lie to me. Okay? I it's like I don't like being treated like an idiot. Well, this they, makes they should, yeah, like if the reason was for power power level, they should have just split the banner. And Kane and Graph could have been no shard price increase. And then Rydia and Id could have been their own standalone banner with the usual. They, they, they get their 50 shards. They only cost 32K, but the collaborations usually cost, et cetera. Yeah. But, um, no, so this, is, this is obviously a, a – th this is just not true. Okay, I'm not going to you know, be angry and call them out for lying anymore, but, but this is just obviously not true because there were other ways of balancing power as well. Like if you're – Oh yeah, okay. I'm I'm not I'm not getting into this because I feel my rage rising. But we still have another that, that's still gonna make me just as angry in this uh, in this producer letter. So um, do you want or do you want to say something more about the 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 Sino Gears collab or should we move on? Um, well, I, I, I just touched on something you said. You said you'd rather them not say anything. Not me. I like the fact that they're communicating at all, even if it's not what I want to hear. I prefer that over just nothing and ignore. I, well, I, I, I don't that. know about that. Like, I hate being lied to. You know, that's like, oof. I don't know. I don't know. Like, ugh. I mean, I understand that in this case, telling the truth is difficult because you're kind of shattering this veil that some players might have that I'm, you're all about the game and not about the profit. I so mean, I get you, you got to keep it realistic. No company on the planet is ever going to say, okay, we're charging you more because we, we just want to make more money. Like it's, it's never, it's never going to be as direct exactly. as that. Even though exactly. that everyone knows the reality is no one is ever going to say, well, I just wanted more money. So that's, that's, that's just never going to happen. Exactly. I get it. So, so, so I get that that message can go out, but then, you know, don't just lie. Like, don't make up shit. That's blatant lies say something else instead say say something like as we're evolving the game we're testing different ways of what players are appreciating and and, and you know uh, how, how the value of a unit and this was maybe not a great way we're getting that feedback now we will bring it with us to the future you know you can just say something like that you, you don't have to lie you don't have to say oh we did this for power levels fuck you stop lying you did not do this for power levels everybody knows that and people should be angry when they're getting lied to. That, that's, that's how I feel. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, sorry. Okay, should we move on? How do you feel? Uh, yeah, so the missing unit upgrades. Um, like, we do know that, like, just that part of the world that they're based in, like, you know, lockdowns, COVID. Like, I get that they are still stretched for manpower and all. That, that, that is a real thing. Yes. Now, does it excuse everything? I don't think so. It's, it's like, 
I get as part of it. I don't think these these upgrades should have been delayed six months because they're stretched by manpower. I think maybe the problem is like mismanagement, prioritization, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, I, I fully agree with the with the COVID thing. I think that hit everyone hard, right? Like like people are having a hard time uh, filling staff and so on. Absolutely, I have full respect for that. But you know, the letter is worded in a way where oh, you know. Um, we have not added these uh, NVAs and EX Awakenings and Crowns because we've been focusing on cow, which is, I mean, th that's a reason. Problem is, we've been missing units way before cow came. We've been skipping upgrades and awakenings and EX abilities, and so I. This is another case for me of, of just lying, especially because of the thing you have me, you and me have discussed a couple of times where. It's very likely that they actually have to put in effort so that unit upgrades don't come in. Because when they forget to put in this effort, whatever this effort means, if it's an automated script or person actually going through files, I don't know, the, the upgrades actually come into the game. So, like, by mistake, they can put upgrades in. This means that they explicitly choose to not put upgrades in. And for someone like Medina, that's that's they, they they're saying now that's planned for april so she's been delayed by what six months since our is, is that is that like what it is I'm pretty sure it's more but I, I couldn't quote you an exact date but it's 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 a lot it's really long like six months for, for for a fucking nba like come on yeah well, so like, like i said but the problem i mean i i get there is a problem and it's 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 just mismanagement that, that is the problem. So it's not being like the, the person in charge is not delegating their workers to get it in a timely fashion and prioritizing things. So like so certain things are being skipped in favor of other things. So like Medina was just skipped for like six to eight months. And when she does come out, they're gonna put in the work anyway because they're gonna add her to the game. But at I that mean, point- there's no involved. Let's call it that as it is. Yeah, but at that point, She's she's now worthless. So they're doing the work anyway. She's going to be added to the game. It's just they're choosing to do that. Let, let, let's just, for the sake of argument, let's just say it takes a person, I don't know, four days of work, just making up a number, four days of work to put in Medina. Well, they're going to do that four days of work regardless of when she's added to the game. They're choosing to do that eight months later after she's power crept instead of putting in those four days of work when she was due and should yeah. have been relevant to the meta. That's my issue with it. I get that they're having man manpower issues. I get that it is work to work on the game and choose and things. My issue is the mismanagement and the choosing of the timing. They are choosing to delay these until they are basically worthless. And when Medina is finally added nearly a year late, it's gonna be who cares anymore because she is so power crept at this point no one's going to have any fun using her because it's too late. It should yeah, have been I mean, a year ago. It, it's still fun to get, you know, there are Medina fans out there as well. Like, it's still going to be fun to be able to NVA one of your favorite sorceresses from the game. I get that. But but I agree with you. Like, like there is there is a timing issue here. And I just want to read a passage from this letter verbatim that I want to discuss with you. So um, this is what they're saying. As to the reason why these upgrades have yet to be implemented, the team has been prioritizing the development of more Crash of, uh, Clash of Wills events. Following the positive feedback this global original content has received from the community, lowering the priority level for unit upgrades in the process. However, in light of your feedback, we are exploring ways to make the unit upgrades possible without halting development of the popular Clash of Wills content. We're also discussing ways to enhance existing NV units based on the balance of the global version, and further details will be announced when more information is available. So this block is very positive, right? Like, like the block itself, the message is very positive. What they're saying is, we're gonna see how we're gonna do more of these unit upgrades without it costing Clash of Wills, and we're even gonna rebalance NV units. So that's a beautiful message, isn't it? Uh, yeah, like, the, you know, it, sound, it sounds like we're, you know, we're figuring out ways to do this work and keep our other work going. We sound like that's going to hire more staff. That's what it. I mean, I mean, like. whatever it means on their end with with staffing or whatever, it's a very positive message to the players, right? But I I think that should be raised 
in the in this producer letter like there are things here that i still think are a bit bs or are, are, are a bit you know like oh we're doing this just because cow but then we're putting in effort to remove upgrades that doesn't make sense but i don't want to focus on that i don't want to focus on the negative i want to focus on the positive in this message so you know players complained right we all did we we complained in the podcast you've complained in your videos um players have been complaining on reddit on discord it has given some effect and i love this i think this should be celebrated this this is a positive message they are now well i mean i don't know how much we can we can you know value gumi promises right now because because it's a very fragile place but they're promising us more nvas more unit upgrades and even rebalancing of nvs to better fit the global meta i mean that's basically what you also asked for right like adding maybe morale skills to nvs and stuff like that uh if that's what they're referring to yeah that'd be outstanding or i mean in general and any upgrade is a positive upgrade in my mind because upgrades are purely player enjoyment content if you know what i mean right like like they upgrades are not there to make players pull more uh, and so on upgrades are there to make players happy and i love when companies do things that make players happy so this is this is to me still very positive right like i don't want to focus on the negativity um in in the whole like overarching there's a lot of bs here there there certainly is but if let's let's us players take to heart that this is a very positive message you know let's let's hold it let's hold them to it but would you agree like it is a very positive message right yeah it's like i was saying earlier like um i i, I always want like communication so the fact that they're responding to the player's sentiment is wonderful because players have been upset like just across the entire game on every single social media platform not just the video we made last week. Everyone has been upset about the Xeno Gear stuff, the skip stuff, yeah. etc. And they're responding, which is good, which is absolutely good. So yes, I, I want them always to respond. I wish it was more than one letter every six months of yeah. response from the from the developer. I you know, I want a response every week. I want absolutely. like, you know, a a community team from this game. I'm I'm not, I'm probably stretching at this point, but that's the kind of thing I would love to have. But it's it's a it's a step. It's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I love communication. I wish there was more of it. I, I may be a bit disappointed that it had to go pretty far and, and many people had to be angry before we heard anything, right? Um, but, but you know, I, I've said this before as well, uh, and, you know, they're pushing forward Esther. Um, there's maybe something to be said about them presenting a really strong quarter and maybe going into, you know, April, which is coincidentally... <laughs> not in the first quarter of this year um we're getting medina and so on maybe we're going into a slightly lighter pace i don't know that's just you know just me trying to think about how they're trying to repair their finances um maybe we should also uh mention what we learned about um okay this is embarrassing i lost my train of thought mid-sentence uh -oh. okay help me Sanzar. there was something else we learned recently um that I really want to talk about. I even want to talk about it when it was leaked on Monday or whatever it was. Do you remember? Uh, step up? What? I, I don't. Damn it. Okay, you know what? It's going to come back to me uh, later in the episode, I'm, I am sure. There was something I, I wanted to discuss that we learned about uh, the game. But uh, let's, let's, let, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, all right, so in this spirit, we're actually getting um ex ability and ability awakening update for madam adele and physalis that's actually positive it is and I'm, I'm certainly glad we're getting them like beyond a doubt yes absolutely uh once again these are like super super late and yeah. well it's kind of a mixed bag physalis completely power crept completely and utterly power crept it is way too late she is dust in the wind she is done that these do not save her. Madame Adele is still relevant, even today with her upgrades. So that's a good upgrade. She is very powerful after being crowned. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, you do need four crowns to get up to that level, though. Yes. Yeah, it's very expensive. Also, Madame Adele is very hard to use. She's very, very hard to gear. She can't even do her burst until turn six, which is just off limits for certain Dark Vision spites. Not all of them, but some of the Dark Vision spites cannot go to turn six and still get a perfect score. Um, right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Madame Adele, very so hard to use. Oh, sorry, go ahead. 
I was gonna say she's very hard to use, but on the fights you can use her on, she's gonna deal basically the same damage as Graph, which is insane. Yeah, that, that, I was just gonna ask that. You know, give give us a feeling for the power level. So exactly, she's so, so just to explain to players what she's getting is is she is getting this uh, cooldown that's available on the sixth turn uh, and has a sixth turn cooldown. If you invest four crowns into it, it has a ridiculous modifier. Like, absolutely ridiculous modifier. And yeah, that's the ability that hurts, right? Yeah, it's 3,700 modifier. Um, also, you can triple cast this with her other finishers. And if you do all three of them, it's actually a combined total of something like 4,100 modifier. The reason no one ever talks about that is because of the AoE bug. And they're AoE, so it does so much damage that the, the, she's going to stop casting after one cast. So that doesn't... You really can't use all three in a turn. But in the future, or on a trial fight, you can use all three in a turn. And yeah, it's actually even more insane if you're able to triple cast all her skills. But in Dark Visions, until we get the AoE bug fix, which was fixed in JP recently. Um, it's, I oh, missed yeah. this entirely. Oh yeah, you know how uh, you can't use AoE skills in Dark Visions? Well, JP fixed that um, about two weeks ago. Oh, that's actually fantastic news. Oh, it's 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 god tier. It's amazing. I cannot wait for it to come to global. It's it's so good. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, yeah, I can't wait either. So, but I love this though. Like, I love that Madame Adele. She's one of the cooler characters from the pure FFB lore. When I say pure FFB lore, then I'm actually just not including Elena and and Yoshi and, and Esther. I'm talking about units that actually partake in the FFB story, kind of right. And yes. I love Adele's lore. Uh, her backstory, um, you know, I, everything about it, and all, all all the units that are that that belong to her house, like all of that is super cool. So I am I am happy. Hey, like if there, like Adele is one of those units that <laughs> no matter how difficult it is to go to turn six in a DV fight, I will fucking do it just to burst with Adele. Okay, that's that's just how how I work. And and Barris also loves the six hour cutscene, uh, Madam Manor basement event that you've got to do for the equipped gun materia. And people in my videos love when I have to go and do six hours of cutscenes to get equipped gun with the Madam Adele. Complaining about that? Okay, you know what? Fuck you, all people complaining about that because that's some of the best content in the game. If you can't see that, then what the fuck are you playing this game for? I I loved Madam Adele's Manor. And and everything that happened in it, I like. I I honestly remember doing all of this myself too, and and it was it was pretty enjoyable. Like I don't know, I don't know. What, or or what do you feel, Cesar? Did did you not like it? Oh, I did like it, but I did it as it was intended to be done, which means I did a little tidbit over the course of a story update over the course of two years. Players were coming in having never started it and trying to do the entire two years of content in one afternoon. And that's when it gets like I grind, that. grind, grindy. But I did that. I did the whole content. And yeah, okay. I mean, yes, it takes time, but I don't want to call it negative time. That, that's my point. Like, it's actually enjoyable. Yes, you can't expect, oh, I need a quick gun, so I'm going to get it in 15 minutes. Well, yeah, you're not. Like, it is going to take longer. Um, but it's still enjoyable. I, I would, I would also, you know, uh, recommend anyone going into this. Like, if you're going into it for the first time, don't skip the cutscenes. Enjoy this. Uh, it's actually some of the best content in the game, and it's gonna make you love Adele as a character and her backstory. I still have her husband as a four-star unit that I will never fuse. Locked in my in my um, in my unit inventory. Like, I am never getting rid of them. So I think this is cool. This is cool. Uh, it does require four crowns though. So. I think we already said this. And, and as you said, it's in Zard, do not waste crowns on Fissilis, right? Yeah, she she's just, it's power prep. That's just all there is to it. Her, uh, e even if you have an EX3 crowned out, all the support, it's just her damage is not there. It's yeah. not too too old, too late. Yeah. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Like, that, that, that that's a shame. But at least Adele is a great, it, it, it's a boon to players, especially those that enjoy Adele. Um, there's one last thing I wanted to, to bring up before we finish up, and that's about the uh, player appreciation ticket summon. Uh, it seems like we're getting uh, the login tickets again, right? Yes, if you've been playing since day one or at some point, um, you'll get all the tickets, which is going to be a grand total of 150 summons. It does have a 3% Neovisions rate this time, which is way better than last time was a 1% rate. 
So yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah. It is a little unfortunate that it's cut off at January 20th, which basically means we're not getting Kane and Rydia in the banner or Esther. Ooh, that's, that's, that's a big shame, actually. That is a big shame, but it is free. And there are still good units in the pool. Like, I mean, you can still pull units like Maeve. You can still pull units like all the relevant cow units. So I think this is fine. Yeah, I'm personally really hoping for a Tyvus. How about you? What is that? What is that one Neo Vision you'd love to off banner from this? That's actually a great question. So I think like the only unit I don't have is Auron uh, of the Envy units, and I wouldn't mind an Auron just to be able to make my Titus stronger. Um, so maybe, but although I don't feel that much for Auron to be honest. Like I was a Yuna all in <laughs> when 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 that came around. Um, so uh, I don't know, actually. I, I, I honestly, like, I wouldn't mind a Maeve. I don't have a Maeve. So that's definitely, like, would be fantastic for my roster. But you're hoping for a Tyvus. I thought you had him. I do, but I only have one, and I want, like, multiple copies of that STMR. So the more oh the my better. God, I already said this, Sinzar, but if you have less than three, you're a loser. So uh, I know, so I have to get two more on Thursday, two more, please. Two more copies. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't actually mind Tyvus either, because... I really, Tyvus is also one of those units I really enjoy from the original FFB lore. I, I really like the, the Season 4 and his story. Um, so yeah. I wouldn't mind more to get him to EX3 because I have him... Or if I just got one more, I'd have him at, at EX3 after one dungeon, I think. So that would actually be really good if I got one more Tyvus as well. And that would mean I also would have four fucking uh, SDMRs too. It's slightly off topic, but kind of on topic. Um, so the Season 4 story, so are, are, are you currently caught up to the most recent one? Yep. Are, are you enjoying the Season 4 story? I am. I am. I like it. I think it's good. I mean, sure, it's a bit generic at times, but it's much, much better than Season 3. I was, was going to say, I actually really, really enjoy the latest latest update. Like, in JP, I play through the story. I sometimes browse the cutscenes. I can't read it. And then I'll right. sometimes I'll sometimes read, like, the you know the four-sentence summary of the entire update from a, from a JP player. But being able to, like, follow the story, you know, exactly on the global version... Um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I actually love the last one with the, like, I don't want to spoil it because it just came out, but um, yeah. yeah don't, I, I, spoil it, don't spoil it. It, no, it, it, was, really it was really like, good. You should not be skipping cutscenes for season four. It's actually well made. It, it's a classic RPG story. Um, you know, it's really good. I, I, and that's why I like Tybus. Like, I bring fucking Tybus whenever I can because I just think he's such a cool character. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I am actively looking forward to each update at this month at this point that was not the case during season three. Oh no not at all well actually i was looking forward to them just because of the lapis like that was all it was to me now it's actually like you know when season three updates came around i would be like as soon as it came around i would just be grinding that story just to get the lapis asap right but now when season four comes around i'm like okay i'm not gonna grind it now because i need to do it when i can enjoy it right like i don't want to do it like while working and i'm just tapping auto right like on, on the next stage i don't want to do that i want to do it when i can actually enjoy it so that's a big change i think season four is great honestly yep i agree and this is going to be nice 100 and 150 pulls like on average you're going to pull like what five units here five nvs right uh three percent rate yep somewhere around that which means they mean well, which means i'll probably pull like two yeah i mean you you like you should you should be getting some nvs at least right like that that's that's the thing like you, sh you should be seeing some nvs and i really hope that uh like i would say i want id from this but it is not a big pool so like i am i'm so sorry like i am so sad i am still sticking to my principles i am not spending money on the Sino gears banner or in the game until i see proof of the positive message they wrote like i want i want to see it actually happen but I'm so sad about that because I, I, like I, it, it, I could buy it. In. I could, I could, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Well, we have one more day of Xeno Gears free pulls. Maybe you'll get your id, and I'll get my graph tomorrow. Maybe, yeah. I, I did get like I, I'm gonna say I was lucky on this banner because I also got another graph on on a daily pull, uh, Xeno Gears um, free daily. Um, that that was like it, it's weird because like I'm super happy with graph. I really am. <laughs> but I was hoping for an id, though. I was I was really hoping for an id. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I, I've been doing 500 pulls, too. No luck. No luck. Putting all my lapis into that banner. Oh, God. I mean, that's all I can do. That's all I can do. I am four tickets away from the guarantee, and I will never 
go i'll never be able to pity it like that's too much lapis from free lapis so yeah i think this is it for this week right uh should be look forward to clash of wills on thursday Mm, absolutely i I, i'm i'm very interested in the ai like i i hope it's not as bad as some of the previous ones have been and i there is a bit more flexibility maybe in uh in what you can bring because i'm just assuming i'm not going to be pulling esther i mean i'm going to try but i don't have lapis all right i guess that's it that's it thanks everyone talk to you later later